Man, today, uh, week one of RC3, we're going to be talking about wisdom. It is so crucial that we live a life of wisdom. God wants us to live a life of wisdom. And so we're going to read all of Proverbs chapter 2. Not all of Proverbs. That would take us a while. But all of Proverbs chapter 2. Solomon uh, was the writer of Proverbs. Man, uh, the Bible calls him one of the wisest men to ever walk the earth. And so uh, if you ever need wisdom... Man, go read Proverbs, go read Ecclesiastes, go read books like that, uh, and they're going to fill you up with, uh, with wisdom. And so today, this is what we're going to uh, read today. So let, let's uh, jump into this. It says this, my son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and including your heart to understanding. There it is. Make your heart attentive to wisdom and understanding. Those are the two things we're going to be looking at today. Yes, if you call out, that's a big if, if, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it later in silver and search for its hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. That's good stuff right there. Verse six, for the Lord gives wisdom, for the Lord gives it. He gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright, and he is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Then you will understand the righteousness and justice, the equity, every good path for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Man, what a prayer that you could pray this week, that wisdom would come into your heart and knowledge would be present, uh, pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you. Delivering you from the way of evil, from men and perverted speech. For uh, who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness? Verse 14, who rejoices in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil? Men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. So it's saying if you're not walking in wisdom, you're not walking in understanding, you're not looking for these things, your path is going to begin to deter. Uh, You're going to go off that narrow road and you're going to walk like the wicked is what it's saying. So you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress, her smooth words, who who forsake the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God, for her house sinks down to death and her paths to the departed. None who go to her come back, nor do they regain the paths of life. Verse 20, so you will walk in the way of the good and keep the paths of the righteous for the upright will inhabit the land and those with integrity will remain in it but the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out of it i don't know about you but i want to live a life of wisdom i, I want to walk in wisdom i want to make choices in wisdom uh, i want to live in that so that my wife can so that my children can so that one day my grandchildren can wisdom is super important and i think uh in our day and age People are always looking for something. Everybody in this room, you're looking for something. I'm looking for something. People in the restaurant next to us, they're looking for something. The question is, man, what should we be looking for? And so today, uh, I titled today's sermon, What Are You Looking For? I want you to ask yourself that. If you're in your living room, you're in your work truck, man, ask yourself, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Let's pray. Father, I love you. I thank you so much for Real Church and all that you're doing in and through us, God. I can't wait till we are all back together, Father. Uh, And and I pray that until then, God, we continue walking in wisdom. We we don't forsake your word. We don't forsake prayer. Uh, We don't forsake communion with you, God. God, I pray right now uh, that people uh, in our church would begin texting each other, calling each other, making, checking up on each other because we take pride in loving one another here at Real Church, Lord. Uh, I pray that in these three weeks, you would continue to sustain us, that you would continue to keep us, but most importantly, that your son Jesus' face would continue to shine upon us. And we love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Before we get going, too, if if we're in the comments, man, give us a thumbs up. Make sure that the sound, you can hear us well. You can hear me loud and clear. I know the people in here can hear me loud and clear. Uh, So uh, uh, make sure you, you let us know down in the comments, all right? I'm an Apple guy. How many of you are Apple people? All right, all the saved people, raise your hand. Who are you, who are, where are Android people? Android, we got one Android person in the room. 
and it's a guy on our leadership. We, need to, we might need to readdress that. <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm an Apple guy. I, I like all the gadgets that they come out with. I have a MacBook, an iPad. Uh, and when the iPad came out, I handwrite all my sermons. Uh, I handwrite them, and so uh, I handwrite them with an Apple pencil. My Apple pencil, uh, it, it's, it's important to me. Um, now, I have three children, uh, one of them being Legend, who loves the pencil, and he can grab it. It's only magnetic on the top, and so he can rip it off real quick. And, and man, if you don't watch it, my pencil can be gone just like that. Well, a couple uh, weeks ago, I remember I was about to, I was looking for my pencil. I needed to write my sermon, and, and I couldn't, it wasn't attached to my iPad. So the first thing I do, what do we do? We ask our kids, where is my Apple pencil? And I couldn't find it. Uh, I ask Adriana because she usually, the wife always knows where we lose things, right guys? They always know. Uh, and so I'm looking for my Apple pencil. I can't find it. And I'm getting frustrated. Uh, I'm a pretty patient person when it comes to little things or, or major things. Uh, I'm slow to anger on major things. And it's weird because but little things irritate they irritate the mess out of me. Uh, and it can get me where I'm hot and I'm flustered and I'm angry. And so, man, I just start flipping our house upside down. I remember it was around the holidays and we, we host a lot at our house. And so I started taking cushions off. I started throwing pillows everywhere. And, and I'm pushing the couch all the way back to the wall. And I'm looking in the cracks and I'm looking in everywhere and I can't find the pencil. I go to my truck. And man, it, I, I flip my truck upside down um, and I, it, it's nowhere to be seen. And I need to write this sermon. Well, uh, I come back in and I'm flustered and I'm angry. I'm, uh, I'm angry with myself that I lost my pencil or I let somebody lose it uh, because it's never us, right? We never lose it. It's always somebody else. Um, and Adriana's like, well, did you check your truck? And I was like, yes, I just got back from there and it's not in there. She's like, are you sure? Let me go look. I said, it's not in there, right? Uh, and we don't want them to go find it where we looked because then we look dumb. Um, so lo and behold, I mean, we spent 30 minutes looking for my Apple pencil. And Adriana says, you know what? I'm just going to go look in your truck. And it was sitting in my cup holder. How did I miss that it was sitting right in my cup holder? Right there, plain sight. A lot of the times I think in our world and as humans, man, we are looking we are looking. Everyone's looking, right? Some people might be looking for a new job. Some single people might be looking for their spouse. Some single guys in our church that are looking for that, that godly woman. Our, some single women in our church, they're looking for the godly man to come to them. Type amen if that's you. Uh, <laughs> type amen, right? Uh, no, this is not the love connection. This is real church. <laughs> but what a better place to find a spouse, right? Uh, some, some people are, are, are looking for money. Some people are looking, man, I want to make as much money as I can on this earth. Some people, you might be looking for position. You want to go higher on the ladder in your workplace. Some, some people are looking uh, for, for a house. You might be in transition of a home. A lot of people in our church actually recently just bought a home. Um, but uh, sometimes we get caught up. I, me and my wife, we don't necessarily, uh, we're not looking to move but anybody just like to go look for, look at houses and you like to look at ideas, right? Sometimes we wish we could go knock on those houses and go look inside. Uh, man, some people are looking for a new car. They want the newest car, the fastest car, the best looking car, the car with all the gadgets and the gizmos and, and fully loaded leather seats uh, to, to warm your tush when it gets cold here in Midland. We're looking for new clothes. We want to know what the new style is, new shoes. Everybody's always looking. And it could, it could be surface level, just like of all the things that I listed. Those are all surface level things. But some of us, we could even be caught looking for even deeper things. Some of us are looking for approval. Man, we, we really want the approval of people. We want the approval of the people in our workplace. We want the approval of our parents knowing that we make them proud. We want the approval of our children knowing uh, that they know that we're working as hard as we can to provide everything that we can for them to have a good life. Some of you uh, watching right now, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for approval of man. And, and I, that, that's a whole nother sermon, but that could lead uh, down a dark road and, and, and lead you where you don't wanna go. 
Some people are always looking for the newest ideas. Uh, I'm a podcast listener, an avid podcast listener, and I'm always listening for new ideas, new thoughts, uh, new innovations, new, new ways to make real church better, new ways to become a better communicator, new ways to, to look at my Bible and, and study my Bible, new ways. We're looking, we're looking. Some people are looking for that side hustle, right? Uh, we're looking for that side hustle so that we could have financial freedom, uh, whatever they might be for you. Some people may be looking for influence. Man, you want influence with your friends and your families, and, and you want to be known as a person that when you say something, your words hold weight. You're looking for influence. Some of you are just looking for acceptance. You're looking for acceptance, just like what we talked about in approval. Man, some of us might actually be looking for recognition. You want people to applaud you. You want people uh, to, to recognize you on Facebook, recognize you at work. You, you want to win that Employee of the Year award. Man, everybody in this world is looking. Right now in this room, we have people. Uh, my daughter, Kinley's in this room, and, and she's the youngest person in here. She's eight years old, all the way up to the oldest people. We're not going to point that person out. You know who you are. Uh, <laughs> but everybody is looking for something. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? I believe the Spirit of God is telling you right now, man, this is what you've been looking for. Man, you have been looking for acceptance. You've been looking for, for love in all the wrong places. You've been looking for approval in all the wrong places. What are you looking for? Because we're all looking for something. And, and let, let me go ahead and state this, though. Even though we're all looking, this isn't inherently bad, okay? God designed us, wired us, created us in such a way that our hearts yearn for something outside of ourselves, right? Uh, since we, especially when you become a young adult, you, you begin maybe even younger, uh, like even Abby, she, or you're a teenager. You're a teenager now, right? My gosh, that's crazy. Uh, teenage, bless you, Tony. Uh, we, even as teenagers, man, there's something, that's when we begin to figure out, man, I need something outside of me to satisfy my soul. I need something outside of me to know that I am loved and that I matter and that I, uh, uh, my life matters, that it's important. And now that's when we go on all of our journeys of looking and searching. What is it that you are looking and searching for? And again, it's not a bad thing that you're looking, but just like me looking for my Apple pencil, man, we could be looking in the wrong places. We could be looking in all the wrong places. We could be looking for it in social media. We could be looking for it in uh, money. We could be looking for it in status. We could be looking for it in our friendships with people. We could be looking for it wherever it is. Man, we're just looking in the wrong place. And just like my wife, God is saying, it's right here. It's right here. And it's in me. It's in my son, Jesus that's what you could be looking for. Now, uh, reading Proverbs 2, it tells us what we should be looking for. It says you need to be looking for wisdom and understanding. Somebody type that in the chat. You should be looking for wisdom and understanding. So uh, we have to rewire our brains this morning and ask ourselves, man, what is it that I'm looking for? And does it include wisdom and understanding? In these next three weeks, Pastor Anthony's going to be talking about seasons. Uh, Ronnie's going to be talking about stepping into seasons. And, and before we do any of that, though, we need to make sure we're doing it in wisdom. Or we're going to make choices that we're going to regret. We're going to make choices that we think are right. Because the Bible says that sometimes we think we know what is right, and it looks right, and it seems right. But in the eyes of God, it's not. So we always want to make sure that we're living our lives out of wisdom. There was a king in the Bible. We all know him, King David. King David was one of the greatest kings that Israel ever saw. And then he had a son in Solomon. And that's who, again, wrote uh, a lot of the books of wisdom. Well, Solomon, uh, David's coming to the end of his life. David reigned as king. And, and, and Solomon was then appointed next to be the next ruler, the next king to, father, uh, to follow in his father's footsteps. And so we see this young boy, some, uh, some, some believe that he was in the age uh, around 15 to 20 years old. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but from 15 to 20, I had no business 
reigning and ruling as a king, right? I could barely figure out where my keys were, let alone rule a country, become a king of a country. And yet we see this young boy in Solomon wanting to be, or not wanting, but being placed as king. Now, the reason I say that I had no business, because at 15 through 20, man, I wasn't looking for Jesus. I wasn't looking for wisdom, and I wasn't looking for understanding, right? Uh, at 15 through 20, we were probably all, uh, unless you were saved young, and you, you're just, you know, you flew into church, or you flew into this live stream on angel wings this morning. Uh, we were just looking in the wrong places, looking for the wrong thing. Last night I asked, and I want to ask a question, make sure you answer down in the chat, and, and I want to see if anybody is bold enough in this room to answer the question, no judgment, no judgment, just put it down in the comments, somebody in here in this room, uh, if, if we see, okay, we see, let me lay out this out, we see Solomon, he's about to become king, he's a young boy, uh, and God appears to him in a dream, because he's already starting to make some decisions that aren't right, he went and he took Pharaoh's, uh, uh, from Egypt, uh, his daughter, and married, and God's like, no, 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 you don't need to, because they worship pagan gods, and all that is going to, when you bring her, you're bringing all kinds of bad stuff, right? And, and that might just be a message to somebody out there, you need to dump that girl, because she's bringing some craziness into your life, uh, but we're not going to go down that road. Uh, but again, if we don't act in wisdom, the things that we bring into our life are going to affect us and those around us more than we ever think. Wisdom. And so Solomon, he's already making some decisions. He's a young boy. What's he looking for, man? He, he, he's got, every, he's got the, the world in the palm of his hand. What's he going to look for? What's he going to search for? What's he going to ask for? And God appears to him in a dream. And, and last night we were laying in bed. I was kind of just going over my, my sermon in my head with my wife. And I said, hey, babe. <clears throat> uh, we paused Netflix. I said, I got a question for you. I said, if God appeared to you right now, <clears throat> excuse me. If he appeared to you right now and he said, what is it that you want, Adriana? What do you want? You can have anything that you want. Just ask me. What would it be? And Adriana kind of set up. You could tell that that question kind of intrigued her. She didn't know uh, why I'm asking her if I was trying to trap her, if I was trying to trick her. Uh, man, but if God appeared to you right now and he said, Teresa, he said, Raul, Matthew, you can have anything that you want. What would you ask for? I think we would ask for what we've been looking for in our life, right? Type it down in the comments. I want to ask you who are watching in your living room, man, what ha if God appeared to you right now, maybe in a vision or in a dream tonight, and he said, hey, if I could answer one prayer, what would it be? And Adriana couldn't answer. She was like, I don't know. That, that, that's a pretty, you know, that, I got to think about that. I said, let me make it even more intriguing. If God appeared to you and said, what is it that you want? If I could answer one prayer and you know that I'm going to give it to you, what would you ask for? Is anybody in this room bold enough? No judgment. What would you ask for? If you're in the comments and you're bold enough, what would you ask for? Would it be healing over a family member right now that you're desperately searching for? Would it be for that uh, raise that you've been asking for? Would it be health for your children for the rest of their lives? What, what, would it be financial freedom for the rest of your life? What, what, what would you ask for? And again, I would, I would probably state that you would ask for something that you're looking for right now. And so he asks Solomon, Solomon's 15 to 20. You ask any 15 to 20 year old boy in our world, if God could answer one thing, what Man, most of the time, they're probably going to ask for riches or for glory, right? Because that's the world that we're living in. Now, can I be real with you? I mean, our church is real church. If God were to come up to me right now and say, Carlos, if there's anything that I can answer, and you know that I'll give it to you, what would you ask for? I, I, I might be tempted to ask for some money. Anybody? Am I the only real person in here? I might ask for that new 2022 Corvette. No, I wouldn't waste it on a Corvette. But you get my point. You, we, we might be tempted to ask for something material. And then once I get past that and realize that's kind of dumb, I might ask for prosperity for my children. Because if my children prosper, I prosper. Amen? <laughs> but, but 
I think you get my point that we would ask for something material. And King Solomon has this opportunity. He has an opportunity that most people don't get. A for sure answered prayer. And if you're reading this story, go read it in 1 Kings. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing today for the sake of time, but 1 Kings, go read the story. 1 Kings chapter 3. And and Solomon answers this question that a lot of us are sitting right now. We're like, man, what would I ask for? And he says, as a young man, he says, God, give me wisdom and give me understanding so that I may lead and love your people well like my father did. A 15 to 20 year old young man could ask for money, for fame, which he has already, but he could ask for more of it. And he asks for wisdom and understanding. That blew my mind. That blows my mind when I read that. He asked for wisdom and understanding. And the Bible goes on to say that God was so pleased that he asked because he said said the same thing. He's like, man, he could have asked for anything and he asked for wisdom and understanding. And because of that, I'm gonna give you all the wisdom and all the understanding and all the riches that you could ever handle. Man, can I just go ahead and throw this out there? God does want good for you. I know there's a lot of, there's a thin line, but people, oh, the prosperity, Uh, man, God wants us to prosper. What kind of father wouldn't want their children to prosper? He wants you to prosper, but that's not his main thing. Man, he wants you to live in wisdom and understanding. Why? Because that will live, that will lead us to live a life of righteousness and it'll lead a lot, it'll lead us to live a life that points people to Jesus. Why, why do you do that? Man, I just want to be, you know, I want to be wise about that. And it points people to Jesus. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 tells us that the beginning of wisdom, where do we start? Where, where do we start? Where does wisdom begin, right? If we're supposed to be looking for wisdom, we're supposed to be looking for understanding, where does that start? Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 answers that. It says that the beginning of wisdom is, begins with the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. What does that mean? Do we, are we afraid of God and what he's going to do to us? No. It means that we have a reverence for God. That we say, God, you are holy. There is no one like you. There is none like you. I'm not like you. My spouse is not like you. My children are not, not like you. You are perfect in every way. You are holy. And that's where wisdom begins. We cannot live a life of wisdom and understanding if we first do not revere God. We first do not fear the Lord. In a simple way, I always put this when people ask, what does it mean to fear God? Fear of God isn't being afraid of God, it's being afraid to be away from God. I wanna be in his presence, I wanna walk in his grace. And I never want my life, because I've been in that position where my life is not under his grace. And and, and I wanna make sure that I live in reverence and understanding. Amen? Don't we all want to do this? Amen. Amen. Here's the cool thing. We all like looking for something, so we've established that we need to be looking for wisdom and for understanding in our lives, for our children's lives. Uh, Maybe you're a business owner. You need to be looking for wisdom in all areas of your life that you can. How to parent. Anybody else need wisdom on how to parent your children? Amen? (laughs) We need wisdom. Here's the cool thing. When we're looking, you know, let, let's say you go out, school's about to come up, school's are right around the corner, you're about to go look for shoes, you're about to go look for clothes, you're about to go shop for all those things. How sweet would it be if those things were free? You went and looked, and there was a big old sign outside of the mall that said, everything is free. Man, we would be elated. We would be in joy. We would be so excited that what we're going to look for is free. Here's the cool thing in James The Bible says, James tells us, you know, there's one thing that God and he gives and he gives it graciously and he gives it without asking questions and he gives it without uh, being attentive about it and and being uh, reserved about giving to it, giving it to us. You know what it is? Wisdom. If you want a prayer that's answered every single time and that he'll give it to you, wisdom. Why? Because he freely gives it. He freely gives it. I don't know about you, but when I sit and ponder and I think about God giving me all the wisdom 
uh, and it's free, and he gives it to me uh, graciously, why, do, why don't I ask for it more? No, I try to figure things out on my own way, through my own understanding. When I serve a God whose understanding is higher than my understanding, why don't I go to him? When my relationships in my life are broken, why don't I go to him? When I'm confused about a situation and the decision I need to make, why don't I go to him every time? Because he freely gives wisdom. Some of us are right now, you, you got some decisions in your life that you need some wisdom. You, you, you don't know how uh, you, you need your financial sh situation to become better. You need some wisdom on how to handle your finances. Now, let me go out. Let me throw this out there. The Bible says that if we hang out with wise, we become wise. Every person on our leadership here at Real Church is older than me. Every uh, elder on our board right now is older than me. And I purposely did that because the Bible says if I hang out with the wise, I become wise. You hang out with foolish people, you become foolish. And so you need to check your circle. There's, there's studies out there that show that you are the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. So you need to ask yourself, who am I hanging out with? And do I want to be the average of those five people? So, uh, man, I love people. I want to be around people all the time. Uh, but, man, I'm super, uh, and without it being noticeable, I am super, uh, how do I say this? I, I, I am, for the people who are around me and my family, I'm very careful. I'm very careful who I allow to speak into my children's life, about, into my wife, into our church. Why? Because I'm the average of those five people. And I want wise people around me. And James says he freely gives that to you. So whatever your situation, whatever season, Pastor Anthony, that is going to help you identify that you're walking in next week, you need to walk in that season of wisdom. You need to walk in, in, in with understanding because that's the kind of life that God wants for us and the kind of life that he wants us to live. Wisdom and understanding, how do we get it? We ask for it, right? But it comes to two things real quick. It comes through reading of your word and prayer. Type that in the comments so that we remember it. Reverence comes uh, because remember, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord, which is reverence. Well, how does that come? Through prayer and through reading of the word. Man, some of us through this summer, uh, can I be honest with you? We, we get a little lazy in the summer, right? We get a little lazy. We get a little lax. We, we're not in so much routine. Uh, kids aren't in school. We're not going to practices as much. Uh, and so we get a little lax. And I think a lot of the times when we get lax in the physical, we get lax in the spiritual. So our prayer time begins to slip away. Us opening the word of God begins to slip away. And, and let me encourage you. I'm not here to beat you up and condemn you for that. I'm here to encourage you. Hey, get right back on it. Can I be honest with you? I've gotten lax this summer with the church building and everything in the way I've eaten and I, I, I don't work out anymore. And, and, you know, instead of beating myself up, walking around the house like I do, oh, I'm fat, I feel miserable, I'm tired, uh, I don't feel good. Guess what? Just get right back in it, right? So what are my wife and I going to do today? Matthew, you're going to be proud. I'm going to go cook some chicken today and tomorrow because you don't start a diet on Sunday. You start it on Monday. You get right back on it, right? So if you've deviated away from your prayer and your reading and your devotion life, man, get back in it. Get back in it. Go, 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 go to uh, your Apple bookstore if you're an Apple or I don't know what you Google people use, or Android, uh, but go find a devotional. Man, my, I got a devotional every morning now. I pull up on, uh, on my iPad and with the, the pencil, I'm highlighting, I'm making notes and, and then it references a scripture and I open my Bible and I read it and I pray it because guess what? Guess what's gonna come from that? Reverence is gonna come from that. Wisdom is gonna come from prayer and understanding because now you're not relying on self, you're relying on God. You're going to his word and you're going to him. So it's going to bring wisdom and understanding to your life. And I think we could all agree that we could all use a little bit of more of wisdom and a little more, a bit more of understanding in our life. Agreed? Amen? Type, type amen if you need some more wisdom and understanding in your life. 
I want to start a challenge with our church because I know three weeks without being together in, in church and community, man, that can do something to us spiritually. And that's why I encourage you watching, man, get in the room at least one week, get in the room because there's something special about being here. Even though there's only a few of us, you can just feel it because God designed us to be this way. But for the next three weeks, the challenge is hashtag RC3. Three times a day, me and my wife were talking about this last night because I told her, I was like, man, I want to come up with some type of challenge. And if you have an Apple Watch, um, every morning, this morning, I got it again. It says, take a minute and have a, a, a minute of thoughtful thinking or something like that every morning, right? And then I think it happens later on in the day it happens. Um, and we just dismiss it, right? We, I ain't got time for that. I don't got time to think. I got work to do. I don't got time to sit down and think, reflect. I got, I got steps to take in this life. But for the next three weeks, here's what I want to challenge our church as a whole. And I'm going to do it too. Three times a day for three minutes each time. Just stop. And we're going to read a proverb a day. Or you're going to actually read through three Proverbs a day. So every time in the morning, tomorrow morning, you're going to read Proverbs chapter one. You're going to read it all. And then you're going to pray for three minutes. You're going to read, and for three minutes, you're going to open your word and you're going to pray. Because let, let me encourage you, uh, God's spirit isn't on time. I just put three minutes because it sounds cool. RC3, three weeks online. For three weeks, all of us as a church, and you, you set an alarm Okay, because you won't do it. Let's be honest, you won't do it. Three times, go set three alarms in your phone. Whether you get to work at six, you know, man, for maybe it's you use that time, uh, you know, you get to work five minutes early so that for three minutes you can pray and you can read. And then at lunchtime, three minutes. You're gonna go read Proverbs chapter two and then you're gonna pray for more wisdom and understanding. And then in the evening before you go to bed for three minutes, read Proverbs three and, pr and, and pray for more wisdom and understanding. And we're going to do this for 21 days. Why? Because, man, I want a church. What good is a church if we're not walking in wisdom and understanding? We can get excited. We can have the Spirit of God moving in our church. But, but I believe if, if, if that's true, man, we're going to be people of wisdom and understanding. And so for three weeks, three times a day, we're going to pray and we're going to seek the Lord for wisdom and understanding. Man, some of you, you have uh, broken relationships with your parents. Some of you have broken relationships with friends, uh, with coworkers. What, what, some of you might be going through financial situations. Some of you are looking for a new home. Some of you are going through job changes. And so whatever it is that you're walking through, that's what you're going to pray and ask God for wisdom and for understanding. Some of you might need to pray for wisdom and understanding for your children who are about to, we're, they're, we're about to send them back to school. Man, God, help us give us wisdom and understanding. Three times a day for three minutes. Can we do that together, church? If you can do that, type in the comments, hashtag RC3. Uh, that's the challenge that I'm going to lay before us. Raul, you can come up. I think Anthony cut my time. I'm just kidding. I told you I was excited. I was ready to go today. Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. It's so important that uh, we, we walk in wisdom and understanding. Why? Why, why, why is that so important? Why is it that in our life we look for that? We can be looking for a lot of things in our life. Why, why wisdom and understanding? I ask myself that all the time. As some of you guys know, or everybody knows, man, we are moving into our own home. We're moving into our new church. And I am excited about it. Man, I'm there uh, every, about six days a week um, till, till almost sundown. You know, why text me, when are you coming home? When are you coming home? And I'm just so elated. I'm so excited. But guess what? With a new home comes a lot of new responsibilities, new stewardship, more stewardship. And it gets expensive, right? We live right now, man, everything is so expensive, right? God, it, it feels like we're just, money is crazy right now. And, and, and as the lead pastor and, and as our leadership board and our elders, we always want to make sure that we are using what God gives us with wisdom and understanding. 
So we get the new building. We, we, you know, we, we believe it was God. He opened this place up for us. The deal that we got on it is incredible because um, we wouldn't put ourselves in a hole where we couldn't, we couldn't manage it. Uh, but how many of you ever remodeled something? And once you get in, it's like, oh, man, I need to do this and I need to do this. And we knew it was coming, but it's always something, right? It's always something. You never want to let somebody at the car shop say, oh, you, you should change this because then guess what? A, co- uh, you know, a couple hours later, your bill is going to be crazy. And so we're in the process. We got everything torn down. We got spray foam up. Uh, man, we're, we're tearing down a, a beam right now uh, so that our stage doesn't have a pole with me preaching, looking at a pole. Uh, man, we're doing everything that we can. And the whole time, if I'm honest, sometimes I get a little scared. I get a little nervous. And I'm, I'm asking people, man, what, what do you think? What do you think? What should we do? What should we do? And ultimately, I know as the, as the pastor and leader of this church that that final decision is going to come down where I need to make it. And if I'm not praying for wisdom and understanding, bad things can happen. Well, uh, we get in and, and now we're to the place we got to start putting up walls. We, we, we need to put up our walls. We need to put up our kids' classes. We need to build the sanctuary. And, and um so we get some bids, we get some guys, hey, I need you to bid this, I need you to, this is what, this is the floor plan that uh, Pastor Anthony and I and, and some of the leadership we went through, and this is what we're looking at. How much is this going to cost? That's a lot of lumber. That's a lot of metal. That's a lot of material, a lot of sheetrock. And so the first guy comes back and he says, hey, uh, I got, let me, give me a few days, I'm going to go price the material and I'll send it back to you. I said, cool. And he, he, he's next couple days, he calls me. He says, hey, I got the number for you. He goes, now, I just want you to know. And anytime anybody starts with that, right, you're like, okay, here we go. You know, I, the material's high right now. And I'm like, believe me, I'm not looking for a small number. Uh, and so he priced it. Remember, our building is about 12,000 square feet. It's pretty big. And he said, uh, just to frame it, just to get the, the, the posts, you know, the, if you don't know what frame, like just to get the walls up, no sheetrock, nothing, just to frame it, he said it's going to be $29,000 and some change. Some of you are looking at me like, oh, that's nothing. <laughs> My heart dropped, <laughs> like 29 grand. I was thinking of a big number, but it wasn't 29 grand. So I have options. I can freak out. I can panic, I can stress, I can worry, I can have anxiety, I can do all those things which will do me no good. Or I can go to the one who says, I have all the wisdom and understanding you need. Would you come to me? I tell the leadership, this is the cost. I talk to my pastor, I say, hey, this is the cost. He goes, sit on it, sit on it. Cool. God, I I need more, I need wisdom. God, what do I do? I don't want to put... Our church, where we empty our bank account, I don't want to put our church in a financial hurt or even where we're just not stewarding what you've given us, God, because you've been good to us. And so I call the guy back. I'm like, all right, let me think about it. Give me a couple days. I'll talk to another guy who's been a huge help in our project. And he goes, let me make some phone calls. He makes some phone calls. And uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I get a... Ronnie, one of our leaders uh, at the park last week, he says, hey, get, get all the guys. And before he did, it was just me and him. He goes, man, he goes, where are we at? I said, man, this is the bid that we got. I'm kind of waiting, sitting, you know, see what's going to happen, uh, praying. Uh, and he goes, well, how, you, you told me that bid. What was that bid? The bid was 29000 and some change. He goes, I want you to know that I got a text message this morning. This was last week, last Sunday morning. He said, my dad and them know that what we're doing, his dad, uh, he, he helps pastor a church in East Texas. When we first planted, this church is the church who bought us a soundboard, who bought us speakers, who bought us cable because they saw something in us that they believed in. And I was super thankful for that. And he goes, this morning I got a text from my dad. And he said that their church wants to give us $30,000 to sow into our new home. And in the park, I'm like in tears, in tears because I'm like, God, if I wouldn't have waited on you, I would have made a a decision not 
based on wisdom. If I wouldn't have listened to my pastor who said, just sit on it and wait, and I would have probably made a decision uh, that would have hurt us. It probably wouldn't have put us in such a good position. So I get all the leadership guys and I'm telling them we're pumped and we're stoked and we're like, man, God is so good. He is so good. He gave us more than enough. So then we get that guy back because before I pull the trigger on it, I want to make sure that I know all the details because that's a lot of money. And I said, come back to the building. I need to, me and Pastor Anthony need to ask you a lot of questions. And so I'm asking every question, what about this? What about this? Hey, we decided to make this room from 20 to, by 20 to 20 by 25. Like, this is what we need. And he goes, cool, cool, let me get back with you. He calls me two days later. He goes, you know, with the new changes, your price went up. It's going to be $44,000. And I'm like, my Lord. But I, I was just like, no way, no way. God wouldn't have given us what we needed for it just to go up. So uh, through another connection, and I'm praying, God, help me make this decision in wisdom. And I knew that wasn't the wise choice. Long story short, tomorrow morning, our walls start going up. But not only are our walls going to go up, they're going to hang the sheetrock. They're going to tape and mud the sheetrock. They're going to sand the sheetrock. And then they're going to spray the texture on the sheetrock so that all we have to do is go and paint. Can you guess how much he's going to do that for? $30,000. If I were to make a decision based on my wisdom, my knowledge, and my understanding, man, can I, can I tell you, uh, when we got this building, well, God has blessed us. We have more than what we started before we even got the building. Why? Because I think our leadership, we're moving in wisdom. We're moving with understanding. Uh, Man, we're following the cloud. We're following the spirit of God and what he wants to do in real church. Because can I be honest with you? Sometimes I do ask the question, man, did we miss it? Did I miss it, God? I don't want to be a leader who's not walking in wisdom and understanding. And then God reminds me, If you just follow me, if you just ask me for wisdom and understanding, can I, can I say, man, if God cares about a building, how much more does he care for you as a son or daughter? How much more does he want to give you wisdom for your home, for your marriage, for your children? How much more does he want to pour out his wisdom and understanding on your life? Because sometimes we go through seasons in life that we're like, I don't understand. I don't. But God, you do. And I need that wisdom and understanding in my life, God. And so for three weeks, that's what we're going to seek. We're going to seek for wisdom and understanding. But, uh, but Pastor Carlos, aren't those just, just little things? No. Because I, w- I want to read a passage of Scripture to you. And, and, then, and then we're done. I want to pull it up because I, I believe if we understand this, then we're, we're going to understand. Paul wrote this. It's in Colossians chapter 2. Why look for wisdom and understanding? What will we find there? It tells us. He says this. He says, when we pray for you, since we heard, oh, I'm sorry to the saints and to the brothers. So that's you and then that's me. Sorry, my iPad's going crazy on me. He says, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance and understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery. He wants us to know the mystery of God. He wants to know, uh, he wants us to have understanding in the fullness of it. He wants us to have all the wisdom. And he says, where is that found? It's found in Christ in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So when you seek, for the next three weeks, we seek for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding. Guess who we're going to find? We're going to find Jesus. We're going to look at him face to face. We're going to encounter him face to face as a church for three weeks. And it's going to develop a reverence in our church. 
I love to be real, but I want to have a real reverence in our church for our God. Because it's found when we seek that, we find Jesus. And that's what this is about. This isn't about a building. This isn't about even our single church. It's about Jesus. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. Let's go seek him these next three weeks. Father, we love you.